you, Mr. Chair. Th thank you to the witnesses for very good testimony today. Um, I would have liked to have Mr. Tillerson join you. Uh, maybe another time, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. I think that if uh, the Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, was here, he probably would have agreed with a lot of this testimony today, the need for dip diplomacy, development, and defense. Uh, we are living in a world with a lot more danger and terror, and decimating the State Department is, I'll say it respectfully, not smart. Dumb, not smart. We should evaluate, I agree with that, refine, possibly, but trash, no. But I, I have another concern. Uh, we've heard today uh, criticism about vacancies. Uh, as a member of Congress who happens to represent Palm Beach County, uh, it's become obvious to me and maybe to many of you uh, that the White House is running the State Department out of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, the, the President, in my opinion, sees himself as schmoozer in peace. Uh, he thinks playing uh, golf at the Trump golf course or dining the uh, pr Prime Minister of Japan at, at the club at, at Mar-a-Lago is uh, a substitute for, let's say, helping Japan after their earthquake. Uh, and what, else, what really bothers me is that the president actually prof, profits from each visit to Mar-a-Lago. It's a private club. Uh, since he's become president, the, the uh, cost of joining this club has gone from 150000 to 300000 People are paying money to dine in the ambience of world leaders. And... Uh, I think, it's, uh, I think it was said here today a number of times that, that corruption, corruption at the very top around the world in, in governments has been the underpinning uh, of, of, what, of, of a lot of these governments. And uh, I ask the question, how does our president have the moral authority uh, when he is profiting off of every a uh, foreign visit, and he has the Chinese delegation coming next week. The Chinese delegation is coming to Mar-a-Lago next week. How does he have the moral authority to sit across the table from a world leader and say, oh, you got to keep it clean. You got to count the votes. So I have a question, and here's my question to you. C could you just uh, give me some examples or what you think of how corruption has led to instability in this world, from your experience? Maybe give some examples. I think, we, yeah, I think we've all said today that corruption is endemic in parts of the world. We've seen it in Afghanistan. We've seen it in Pakistan. We see it in China. We see it in Russia, in abundance in Russia. And so our country, um, however flawed we are, and we're not perfect, we have to be immune from charges of corruption, certainly, in our, in our leadership. You also made an earlier point, I just wanted to say quickly, we want the president to be fundamentally involved in foreign policy. If the White House is strongly involved, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But uh, the most effective administration, most people would say, in the last 40 years was George H.W. Bush, he delegated to his Secretary of State, James A. Baker III, they were, they were, a, they were a team. And, and you want delegation to your major cabinet uh, agencies. And right now, it looks like the State Department is not plugged in to the White House. And, and I would hope that that could be fixed and that Secretary Tillerson could be given broad authority. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back.